I hope you've been enjoying the course recaps from Modern Samurai Project. This is gonna be part three. If you missed parts one and two, you can go watch them up here. Uh, thank you again to Scott and AJ for letting me video everything and put these out for you. Uh, so today we're getting into the draw and I feel like this is gonna be a very timely one because a lot of what I've been seeing online, a lot of questions about concealed carry draw and then some of the videos that Shabas has been posting up, I think this will help a lot of people who have had those questions and just elaborate further on some of the things you can do to improve your draw. Now, for those of you who've been following along, you already know one of my goals coming into this course was to improve my concealed carry draw. Because in all honesty, up until now, my training has been like 90% from a belt as far as like a, a range belt or duty belt, whatever you want to call it. 90% from that and like 10% concealed. Not nearly enough concealed, especially thinking about what how I carry most of the time. And, and there's a whole video coming on that later. We'll talk about that like with a whole bunch of other gear. So we'll cover that in a separate video. But coming into this year, I knew I wanted to switch that up and make my training 90% from concealed and only 10% from belt. So I knew that I had Modern Samurai coming up and that was one of my big goals coming in. So we already covered the first one, which was recoil management and mainly coming from support hand grip. And then the second, my second goal coming into this was improving my concealed carry draw. So that was something that I really wanted to work on, especially since being a smaller person and carrying a 2011, uh, it presents a few problems. Now, a lot of you guys don't believe me that I carry this and that's cool, but for those who know me, this is literally what I carry around. This or like one of my triarchs, it's always some 2011 variant. And again, we'll talk about that in another video. But the two holsters that I do carry from are the QVO Tactical Wingman, and this is their Supreme version. I know a lot of you guys ask about the wrap on it. QVO Tactical, hit them up. Uh, there's a coupon code in the description along with a link to their Instagram account. Uh, go hit them up, Roger's awesome. Roger's also a great shooter as well. So uh, yeah, QVO Tactical, love their stuff. This is the one if I'm going somewhere where like I feel like it's sketchy and I need to reload. Um, if I'm trying to be a little bit more discreet, this is the more discreet. And again, from QVO Tactical, you can get it wrapped or whatever. I have a new one coming that has the two clips instead of the single paddle here. And, or sorry, the single big paddle. Um, the reason being is that I found that the two clips work better for me and how I carry. Uh, it's up to you, but QVO has lots of options and you know, whatever suits you, uh, colors, style, all that, you can choose a ton of guns. But uh, these are the two holsters that I mainly work from. And in the video coming up, you'll see these are the two that I work from throughout the class. So it's uh, this gun with these two holsters. With all that out of the way, I'll turn it over to Scott. So the next part about this that everyone wants to learn is, again, the draw. That's why we're here for today, AIWB on the draw, okay? So guys, I teach the draw in reverse, right? High, comp high compressed ready, front sight slightly proud. Then we talk about how to put our hands on the gun and marry them consistently and proprioceptively. And then we actually get to the uh, draw, okay? Um, why do I do it that way? If I started from the holster, what are you still worried about at the end? Where's the dot? Okay, because we don't have a methodology on that yet. So I start off with that first. So the draw is easier because now you're not worried about finding the dot if you do the proper technique, okay? So in order to find the dot, right, or your front sight, did you switch to your, you're yeah, going to your irons? Okay, it, wor it's, it's, it works fine with your front sight too, okay? We're gonna do what I call the four P's to find the dot. Those four P's are present the pistol, prep the trigger at about 80%, inward pinky pressure, drops the dot down, and press the shot, okay? So present, prep, pinky press you do those four things in that order that dot will drop from 12 o'clock every single time and that round will go where you need it to go okay now just do those four p's don't do any other p's like punch out punch out but scott i'm gonna punch out in a gunfight you will probably also piss your pants in a gunfight you don't need to practice it all the body mechanics apply right lead foot forward nice good high grip I see the target in my bottom peripheral. I'm keeping my front sight just slightly proud, just slightly, okay? Don't be muzzling St. Michael, okay? And don't be artificially flat either, okay? So it's just slightly braised. I'm going to present the pistol, prep the trigger, pinky pressure down, just drops, and I break the shot, okay? Up! Ready! Up! Dropping from 12, yes, perfect. Ready. Up. Not dropping from 12. Yep. Ready. Up. Good. First thing we got to understand is 
where do our hands come together when we marry our support hand to our firing hand and to the gun, right? Where does that usually happen? Can somebody give me a body part? Okay. Sternum. That's where your body naturally thinks the middle of your core is, right? But notice where it was, right? So when I clap, it's right there. See the distance from my sternum? It's not here and it's not out here. This is where my hands naturally come together so that my support hand can be the steering wheel and the brake when I need it to be. So again, I see the target in my bottom peripheral, I see the front side and the top of the optic. A firing hand thumb is out of the way because it doesn't want, I don't want it to block anything, okay? Middle knuckle to middle knuckle, 90, or I'm sorry, 45 degree angle. I'm gonna come up, over, and through, up, over, and through, up, over, and through. What'd my gun do? Nothing. It just shakes in place basically, right? Because I'm trapping it above, below, and behind the bore axis, okay? So now here's the thing. You guys are going, hey bro, we know you shoot for Walther, you got that new PDP jam. You can't do that with my shitty gun. Somebody come here and give me their shitty gun, especially if you have a SIG. Downrange, gun out, okay, cool. All right, so, and then back up. All right, so we got a, what's this, a 40? 40, 48. 48, right? So we got a smaller gun. It is done by Boresight Solutions, because you a pimp, right? But small gun, so it should, rip out of my hands a little bit because it's so springy and all that other shit, right? So let's see if that happens, okay? Got the dot. Up, over, and through. Up, over, and through. Up, over, and through. What did slide do? Nothing. But now part of the thing is the internet, man. They get so wrapped around the axle with stop telegraphing, stop telegraphing, right? Well, like, you know, put your hands down. Get your hands off your shirt. Stop telegraphing. Here's the thing, though. Who here has never been in a fist fight before? Good, because we, we want to take care of that right now? No, I'm kidding. I'm messing with you. She's like, oh. Anyway. Taekwondo. Anyway. So, sir, when you got in that fist fight, where were your hands when you started? Right here. Stop that. You're telegraphing. Of course you're telegraphing, because you don't want to get punched in the face. Right? So do it, right, to the necessary end that you need to. Your hands are up, right? So that's why we're doing the hands up in the, in the high thoracic position, right? So the way we're gonna grab at the belly buttons, everybody grabs east-west, right? Watch what happens when I grab east-west. What happened? Nothing. My shirt got tighter. I don't want my shirt to go this way, I want my shirt to go this way. On the other hand, if I go and I scoop it up and I grab everything north-south, whoop, now what do you see? The gun. Right? How many inches is that, sir? It's 12 in my house. <laughs> so here, north, south, at the belly button. Then when I get it, I bunch it up, and then it goes to the Mary area, which is the sternum. Look at that space. That's like three yards, right? Anyway. Some people will tell you to bring it, you need to defeat the cover garment, okay? Like you got two enemies. You got the guy you're fighting and your cover garment. You gotta fight them both. You gotta defeat them, right? Just to your sternum, because if I go to my chin or to my shoulder like some people do, and the gun comes out, where's the gun come out to? My sternum. My hand's up here, what does my hand need to do now? It needs to go back up, and that's time, that's inefficient, right? But that's not what happens, guys. What happens is, my hand's up here, my gun comes out, it starts going toward the target. And then my support hand goes, oh shit, there's a party and I'm late. And because your body works like an X, where does your dot go as a right-handed shooter? To the left to the right as a right-handed shooter, or a left-handed shooter, right? Just to your sternum. Here, 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 middle finger, out. Does that make sense? So, here, 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 out. Easy day, okay? Now, when will that not work? If you got a super ass long shirt that's down to your knees and you're wearing a dress, don't do that, okay? Kit matters, okay? Your shirt's part of your kit. <laughs> up! Much better, much better, much more pronounced. Ready! Up! Okay, not bad, not bad. Go ahead, get the gun out at 100. See where your head's at? Mm -hmm. Now bring the gun back. Don't move your head. There we go. Now ease the gun out. Good, holster up. Leave the head there. Okay. Put your head where it needs to be now. Up! Good. Now we kind of went full bore on that yeah, one, right? Yeah, I was right. more worried about other stuff. Yep, that's all right. Okay. Okay, so now incorporate that into the 80 20 yep. okay. presentation. Up! If you're within one inch of that one inch square, great job. Let's go. If you're a
drill it and drill it and drill it and drill it. They walk around giving you refinements, uh, uh, improvements, and nuances to your technique. Then when you're done, you spar. We roll. Because if you can't do it under pressure, you can't do it, right? So how are we going to do it under pressure? Individual times. Okay, a little bit to the left, 140. All right, so there you go. There is Scott's technique when it comes to the concealed carry draw. Now, I will say this is just a small portion of a much larger block. I mean, you're talking hours of footage that was cut down to this. And the reason I cut out a lot of that is because what I was most focused on for this particular video was the concealed carry draw. I'm not gonna cover any of his stuff with outside the waistband, and there's a few like cheat codes or secrets and other iterations, things he goes into that I'm not covering here either. And that's not to say that I don't want to, but more so like, hey, if you want that information, go to his class. <laughs> so I know classes fill up really quick. I know he's booked, you know, two years or whatever. You find openings in classes that may be out of state. I would highly encourage you that if you want that full information, you want the true coaching, the one-on-one, -on -one, sign up for a class, fly out there. It's worth it. Uh, I think, again, he gives you the tools to succeed. It's up to you to put in the work. And I will, I will say that my takeaway from this, like that first day or first couple of days trying to learn the draw, it's a lot because you're taking in a lot of information. You're learning a new grip. You're learning a new way of presentation. You're learning a new way of, of for me, of drawing because I didn't, I didn't practice concealed enough. So it's a lot to do at once. And so there was a lot of inefficiencies in that video. But the time that I've put in since then, working on those and slowly removing those inefficiencies, taking it one step at a time, getting one thing down, I've already noticed huge improvements. And as I continue to work through this and continue to try to get rid of some of those inefficiencies, like for me, the big things I'm working on right now has been uh, keeping this shoulder from moving forward or up when I'm drawing and letting just the arms move as opposed to, you know, a lot of guys lean one way or lean back. And that's something that I've got to work on. Everybody's different. And if I can, if I can eliminate, eliminate some of those inefficiencies, it will allow me to be much more urgent with my draw, much quicker, much faster. And the other thing too that I'm working on lately is for the longest when I draw, I, I would kind of present the gun like an escalator and bring it out and learning to bring it up a little bit this way and letting the dot drop in is, it's, be, it's been better for me since I've done it, but it just took a while to learn. It's unlearning a lot of things, getting a lot of the old stuff out and getting a lot of the new stuff in. So if you are watching this and you're working on it at home, if you're working on your concealed draw and you're trying to eliminate some of those inefficiencies or trying to learn some of these new ideas, be patient with yourself. Take time, put in the work, work on one thing at a time. And once you get that down, then move on to the next thing and slowly, you know, um, chip away at these inefficiencies to improve your draw stroke, to improve your presentation. And I think that's been the biggest help for me or the, or the biggest change that I've seen so far because now we're, you know, three weeks, a month out from the course. I've had a lot of time to get these reps in and, and working it in live fire and dry fire. Uh, being able to work through that and then see it and then knowing knowing the cool thing is is like now knowing when i do something wrong and being able to feel the difference not just in accuracy or presentation like my dot acquisition i, I know immediately oh i did something wrong in my draw before the dot even gets there or like in the speed of the run i can tell before i ever hear the time i know it's slower because i know i did something wrong and that's been the coolest thing and so knowing when i when i do things right it gives me more time more margin for error is what I would call it. Because if you have that, that surplus of skill, that surplus of speed, if you take your time on something else where you need that time, it's okay, you're still fast doing it. So that's what, that's what all this is about, is trying to get rid of those inefficiencies so that we have a surplus of skill, a surplus of speed to be better uh, when it counts, when the test comes, right? This is all practice and the test is out in the real world. So um, yeah, I hope this helps a lot of you. It's helped me a ton. Uh, there will probably be probably maybe one or two more videos from this series. Uh, I don't want to give away too much of Scott's stuff because again, you know, he was gracious, gracious enough to let me film and share this. And if you want all the milk, you got to pay for it. So uh, make sure you like, subscribe, karate chop that bell so you get notified every time I upload a video and I will see you guys in the next one. Also in the comments, if you're interested in uh, Scott's talk on gear and red dots, if you want that in a video, let me know and I'll talk to Scott and see if like that's cool if we put that out. Um, if that's something you're interested in. If you're not interested in it, you just want the training stuff, cool, we can leave that out. But leave it in the comments, let me know. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Looked like Gun Boy with his hat on. He didn't even watch my stuff probably, but I watch him. That sounded weird. I don't watch him. I meant like I follow him on Instagram. This is going to the outtakes. From the top.
so I've never, I, or I haven't had the chance to give proper thank you publicly to uh, Jay, who is a friend from State 48 and from Tag Firearms. So he helped me with the Forerunner and then also connected me with, with uh, Tag Firearms and some gun stuff we do th with them. But last time I went to Arizona to visit, homie hooked me up with the Racing Ed Edition Jordan 6s. Yeah, so fresh, so clean. And uh, I think I'm gonna wear those today. But I just wanna say thank you, Jay, uh, publicly. I know I've already DM'd you, but thanks, homie. Anyways, most of y'all don't care. But they're super hot fire. As one time. <sighs> I swear he calls. What's up, buddy? Can you send me that Smith Machine uh, um, shoulder press thing you sent me the other day? It should still be in the group chat, buddy. That's really far back. Yeah. Well, I'm kind of recording right now, so. Oh, am I in the video again? Hi, yeah. If you guys don't know, I call Jimmy up 11 times a day. Absolutely not. You know why it's still my third? Because that's great. All right, buddy. Let me finish this video. All right, we'll talk to you later, buddy. All right, bye. 45 more minutes. Bye. Okay, bye.